So, and you've got a lot of agencies that have to drive three, four hours to get to their Niven site. And they can only go once a week or twice a week and they have to make an appointment to show up. So <clears throat> you're, you're an investigator. You have a shooting on thir- Thursday. Your Niven day is Wednesday. How many days are you missing getting that, in- that intel? Even though on how many guns were involved, you're at, you know, you got set, you had to wait a week where you can go drop your stuff off. And then you're basically waiting for how, how busy that site is somebody to right. tree, 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 triage it. And that's the biggest backlog is 18,000 agencies trying to filter into 300 sites. I mean, that's, you know, that funnels thinner than the tip of this pen. So what we do with, with, with our technology, since we've we've realized and ATF has said it, a lot of studies have shown that the biggest hurdle is getting that information triaged and put into the NIBIN system as quickly as you can. So as Sean said, you know, our system does it in 30 seconds. We are the only automated and patented triage tool on the market right now. The way it works, you've got a shooting. If you're going to take it to your NIBIN site and you've got those 50 cartridge casings, you're taking that bag, dropping it off and saying, see ya, call me when they're done. Somebody has to manually look at each one of those underneath a stereoscope and make a subjective decision. We're basically allowing technology. It's not replacing anybody. Somebody still has to operate the machine, but let technology work smarter and harder for, for you. Um, so with our algorithms, it's able to generate that report in minutes while you're still working the scene be able to say, hey, you got three guns involved or you got two guns involved. And, oh, by the way, you you recovered one already. So now you're just looking for one gun when witnesses may say, oh, yeah, there were four different shooters here. You know, now detectives got to run down these rabbit holes of trying to f- find these Im- infamous three other shoot- shooters. But to know within minutes while you're still working the scene, hey, there's two guns involved here. That's what's that critical crime gun intel that we want to get out to the agencies that they're that they're lacking from get, getting. Now, how robust is this thing? Is this something that I could literally do in the field? Like, is it something I can just carry? I can, it's hard to tell from the picture. And for those listening, I have this thing. Um, I've got the website up. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> it is sixteen. Handheld. Sixteen pounds power power over USB. You just plug it into a desktop or a laptop. Um, I'd say about 85% of our agencies keep it in the office because that's where all the evidence is going to come back to anyways. Either their crime scene techs use it or it's in the property room or the detective office. Uh, They keep it right there and it's on a computer. Okay. Yeah. I was going to have Sean hold it up while you explain because um, his, yeah, that way we can. So that's the front of it. Can you kind of show how, talk him through how this thing operates here? I know it's 16 pounds, so he's holding up a bowling ball right now. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Start doing curls with it. But yeah, it's got a mic- okay. it's got a microscope on, on the top. That microscope, um, it's basically the same type of microscope that's used to etch serial numbers in <laughs> diamonds and also assemble mic- microchips. So what we're okay. able to do is look down deep down into the firing pin impression, all the shear marks, all the breach face marks, or basically all the breach marks that are basically embossed on that cartridge case from the breech side of that firearm when that cartridge case is sitting up against it and you squeeze the trigger and that firing pin hits it and that 2,000 pounds of pressure is sending that bullet down down range, it's basically stamping all those marks on the, the head stamp of the cartridge case. And those are pretty unique between guns. We're able to be able to say that, hey, of these 20 cartridge casings, these eight are from one gun and these 12 are from a second second gun. Our algorithms, our system is able to do, do that with, within between 90 and 9, 95% accuracy. Really? Damn. Yes. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Okay. So let me give you a scenario, me as a cop, thinking as an investigator. Um, I get a, uh, a gang beef going on. Um, mm-hmm. One just went and shot up, you know... Uh, rival gang leader's girlfriend's house. Um, no one's hit. We get out to the scene. We know there's going to be retaliation probably within the next 24 hours. Um, we collect mm-hmm. those shells. Am I able to take that thing? Cause it, it's portable. Am I, mm-hmm. 
so if I have a laptop that's hooked up to the Wi-Fi and in the internet and all that stuff, I can basically take that thing out there and start doing shit on the scene. Like if I have a mobile crime mm-hmm. scene unit. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You're able to, oh, we, shit. we, we made it, you know, it's pretty robust. You know, we could have made it a lot lighter than 16 pounds, but we know cops. Uh, yeah. We throw shit around. Oh, we like, <laughs> we like to say it's cop proof, but it's not firefighter proof because they break everything. 